Okay, thanks for coming back. Um, for this special screening of MA, I've got to give a big thanks to Anchor Bay, who are letting us show it uh, well before the UK release date, so uh, big up to them. Um, I'm going to introduce Dr. Michael Coven. He's going to give a, a short talk about the shallow genre and then uh, sort of turn it over to the movie itself. If you'd like to give a warm welcome to Michael. Hello. Um, Total Film Magazine did one of their typical Halloween-type specials with surveying 50 of the greatest and the good about their top 10 horror films. I thought it was quite, I mean, quite an interesting read, particularly to see who they think are the great and the good within the horror industry. But um, they, the directors of, of Amor, um, Helene Cate and Bruno um, Ferranzi, were, were surveyed. And I thought it was quite interesting that their number one, their top favorite horror film, was Argento's Profondo Rosso. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but for me, having seen Amor, what I thought was even more significant was their number three slot was um, Mario Bava's Black Sabbath. Not Black Sunday, not Mask of the Devil that we would sort of expect to be on the list, but Bava's first, I believe it was his first color film. And you really see that influence of Bava's use of color in, in, um, in Amor, which I'll be talking about momentarily. Right. Gaz asked me to talk to you guys about the Jalo. A couple of years ago, I wrote a book which, at the time, and I still think this is true, um, was the first academic work in English on the Jalo film. Um, and through that particular study, um, I learned a great deal about these films and, and about Italian horror cinema in general. The most interesting thing I discovered was the fact that the Jalo, at least from an Italian perspective, we, most people know it simply means yellow, but it's the word Italians use to refer to the entire mystery genre. So, you know, you go into a Waterstones in, in Rome or in Milan, and you know, you're looking for the Agatha Christie, they'll direct you to the giallo section. So, to an Italian, what giallo means are murder mysteries. Now, anyone who's seen a Dario Argento film or a Mario Bava film knows that, well, maybe the girl who knew too much, but, but that's about it as far as murder mysteries is concerned. That as a film genre, it seems to have taken itself in a very different direction. But I think equally interesting is how often the word giallo, particularly in English, gets used to refer to all Italian horror films, not just Italian murder mysteries, or gory murder mysteries, like Argento and Balba's work. Um, I was uh, asked to give a talk, for example, um, on the giallo before a screening of Dario Argento's Inferno. Now... Okay, it's, it's Inferno's, a, well, I almost said a great film. It's an interesting <laughs> film, as, as Inferno. Maybe not as interesting as The Third Mother, but you know, we don't need to go there. Um, but I thought it was a rather odd thing. But for the person who invited me to do this talk, <clears throat> to them, there, there's another phrase that gets used, and there's a book out with this title as well, um, The Spaghetti Nightmare Film. Um, you know, I guess sort of using a variation on spaghetti western and whatnot, that I guess has a maybe for, for English speakers, maybe isn't sure, but might have a racist connotation to it to refer to sort of everything out of Italy with a pasta name. Uh, that, that maybe, you know, we should find a different name for Italian horror films other than spaghetti nightmare films. So for some reason, giallo seems to have been attributed to them. Um, but Italian horror cinema covers a wide range of expressions. It's not just these very gory, early slasher films um, that, that, that I wrote about, um, Bava, most of his films, particularly once he starts making color films around 1963, his films really start exploring the gothic. And I think Amor is a film in three parts. The first part is very much rooted, I think, within that Italian gothic tradition of the early Bava films, particularly films like Black Sunday, particularly in its use of color there will be these color washes across the screen, often three at a time, where characters will walk through these big pools of color on screen. It's really quite a striking image that comes straight out of Bava. If you're, if people, have anybody here not seen a lot of Bava? Uh, a couple of people. Suspir, Argento Suspiria really owes more to Bava than possibly even to Argento himself. That, that, that Argento's use of color in that film is very much borrowed from, from Bava. Um, and so that first part is sort of an homage to Bava, where the last part, where we get into the giallo 
more properly. Um, the last part of the film has what has become ubiquitous within the, the, giallo, the Italian giallo films of the killer with the black gloves, usually a switchblade knife, black hat. We almost never see his, usually his, not always, but usually his, their face. Um, that that costume of, of the psycho killer dressed in a certain way comes into play in the third part of the film. Now, this has absolutely nothing to do with horror cinema, but for me as a, as a film lecturer, um, it's the middle section that I actually found the most interesting, but for completely non-horror reasons. It's a very small middle section. It, I think, maybe runs five, ten minutes or something like that. But the middle section seems, for those of you who have done film studies or are doing film studies, a great representation of the Kuleshov effect. Uh-oh, uh -oh, I'm getting... Like, yeah, this is you know striking like last night's lecture. So, you know, flashbacks to that. The Kuleshov uh, experiment was something developed in the Soviet Union in the 1920s before Eisenstein and those guys were making their feature films. Um, and basically, a shot of an actor's face, um, just not moving, just not reacting, just a bland actor's face, sort of like Kevin Costner, was was <laughs> intercut with other images of like a funeral, a baby, some food, um, and people watching the juxtaposition of the inserts with the actor's face swore that they saw his expression change. Um, they did part of, the, part of the, the, the background experiment for how montage works, I'm not going into that. But I think because the Kuleshov's initial films have gone missing, you know, they, they, they haven't survived till today, I thought this was a very interesting reconstruction that works very similar, not quite exactly, but Think Kuleshov in that middle section if you're waiting for the horror to come back. Without any further ado, we shall hand you over to this very odd film, and I think we're all quite curious to hear what you guys have to say about it afterwards. Thank you.